Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Chris Vaughn, arriving in his hometown of Kitsap County, Washington. Chris is a veteran of the United States Army Special Forces, returning home after a few years away. On his walk home, he passes through an abandoned mill. Chris is disappointed to see the mill close down, because it was once a place to find work. The local sheriff approaches and greets him, while he is reading the closing notice. When the sheriff recognizes Chris, he offers him a ride home, which Chris initially declines. Chris steps inside the police cruiser after the sheriff mocks his arrest. He reunites with his sister, who is now a paramedic, at home. His mother and father meet him, and he informs them he is returning for good. As they enjoy a meal, Chris informs his family he is looking for a job at the mill, but that they never told him it was closed. His mother claims they didn't want to concern him with such matters, when his father was laid off at the company. Chris attempts to get along with Pete, his nephew, but Pete has a lot of attitude, and leaves without having dinner. The next day, Chris is working on repairing the porch stairs, when his high school best friend Ray pays him a visit. They meet up, and when Chris offers Ray a beverage, he declines, stating he is trying to avoid alcohol, and has been sober for 14 months. Ray invites Chris to join him in a football game with some of their old high school pals, and Chris accepts. Jay Hamilton is presented, who comes from a wealthy family, that used to control a local lumber mill, and he now owns the town's casino. Jay's friends also join in on the fun. These friends are also bouncers at his casino. Throughout the game, Hamilton's team is really rough. Chris observes Pete near the bleachers while playing. He's hanging out with some stuff smoking adolescents. The game is going well until Booth, one of Hamilton's teammates, takes a dirty hit at Chris, and injures his knee. It ends with everyone on good terms, because Chris didn't confront Booth about his roughhousing. Chris and his friends are invited to attend Hamilton's casino. Pete rides by on his little scooter, and Chris warns him not to see him out with his pals again, but Pete merely smiles, and drives away. They arrive at Hamilton's casino at night, and are pleasantly delighted by the atmosphere. Around his waiters and dancers are scantily dressed women. They meet Hamilton, who directs his employees to treat the group like VIPs, and to bring the drinks on him. Chris is escorted to a secluded booth for a dance, but realizes he recognizes the dancer, observing her. When the woman sees his face, she comes to a halt. Denny shouts her out by name, but she walks away. Chris, dissatisfied with the interaction, walks over to the game area to join Ray. He observes a crap stealer using loaded dice there, and confronts him, and the man calls security. A brawl erupts, and Chris is knocked out, and brought underground. He awakens to find three guys holding him down, while Booth removes his army tag. The man proceeds to sever his limbs with a pocket knife. Chris is left for dead on a bridge, before flagging down a truck and is taken to the hospital. The doctor informs Chris's family that he is severely damaged, and whoever did this intended him to die. A weaker man would not have withstood the attack. Chris is taken home to recover, and we see him sleeping and spending time with his family. Pete also cares for his uncle, and cooks for him. Chris gradually recovers, begins working out, and eventually returns to his usual habits. Hamilton shows up one day, as Chris is working on some old steps, and apologizes for whatever his men did to him. He offers Chris a position as head of security at his casino, which Chris politely declines. Jay asks him to reconsider, but Chris insists that this is his final response. Hamilton then pulls out an envelope full of money, and offers it to Chris as payment for everything, but Chris predictably declines. He also informs Hamilton he will file a report against the casino and the attack on him. So next, Chris pulls up to the police station, and discusses the report with the sheriff. Watkins, to his astonishment, informs him that his case has already been investigated, and there is insufficient evidence to indict the individuals. Watkins claims since the mill collapsed, the casino has become the town's sole source of income, and it is therefore impossible to tear it down, or take action against the owner. Chris leaves, frustrated yet helpless, but not before warning Watkins that he will reveal everything. Denny pays Chris a visit the next day, they had a romantic history. They take a short walk together, and discuss the town and how crooked it is. She half-jokingly advises him to run for sheriff in the forthcoming elections, and he replies he might. He also inquires about Hamilton, and she confesses they dated briefly, but had since broken up. She responds the rent must be paid somehow, when Chris points out that she still works at his casino. When Chris returns home, his mother informs him Pete has died from an overdose. They go to the scene, where Michelle informs that the kid had been stabilized, but he was dangerously close. She informs him what he used. Pete's friends admit to pushing him into it. 
Chris approaches them and demands to know who brought them the stuff. The youngster is furious, and claims they received it from the casino security guards. Chris ignores his parents' warnings, and drives home to collect his gun, and heads to the casino. At the last minute, he changes his mind, and abandons the shotgun in the car, instead grabbing a club from the truck, and marches into the casino, smashing the gaming machines. When Jay's thugs try to stop him, he beats them with a hunk of wood in his bare hands. He grabs the club, and tosses it through Jay's office's one-way mirrored window. He goes out into the street to await the police, and is arrested for assault on the spot. Next, he meets with a lawyer about the approaching trial. Jay appears in court with a slew of witnesses from his casino, who say that Chris assaulted them. He is said to be capable of a great deal of aggression, due to his military training, and he appeared out of control that day. Chris notes his lawyer's silence, and believes he too is corrupt. He fires him on the spot, and demands that the judge allow him to plead his case alone. The judge tells him he cannot request a mistrial, but Chris is insistent, reminding the jury and the courtroom audience about the community's pride in the past, and how the town he knew would never have allowed a casino to develop. A casino that takes advantage of its patrons, and sells stuff to youngsters. The court urges Chris to keep on topic, and avoid civic speeches, but Chris reveals his intention to run for sheriff, with the promise of eradicating the town's corruption. He displays scars from the injuries he sustained, when Jay's goons beat him up, in front of the jury and the entire court. Hearing all this and seeing the scars, the jury declares Chris not guilty, and releases him. The entire town is ecstatic, and everyone begins yelling for Chris to run for sheriff. Leaping forward in time, Chris has already been elected, and is preparing for his first day as sheriff. He climbs into his brand new sheriff's truck, and heads to the station. There, Watkins assures him that each of the deputies is a decent and loyal man. Chris walks into the vacant police station, and informs them they have all been fired. Later in the day, while Hamilton is riding in his Porsche with his girlfriend, Chris pulls up, and issues a veiled threat. Hamilton frequently mocks Chris's new authority, and tries to bribe him. As Chris walks away, he smashes Hamilton's tail light, and orders him to fix it. Chris then pays Ray a visit, and invites him to be his deputy officer, in order to extend his one-man army. Ray initially rejects it, owing to his history of addiction. But Chris informs him this is precisely why he needs Ray's help, he wants to dismantle Hamilton's illegal empire, and he needs a dedicated squad to do so. Ray ultimately agrees, and the two of them demolish the constructed empire, one by one, going after Hamilton's men. Ray claims the substances being sold are of five-star quality, implying they are manufactured in a factory. Chris suggests going and getting them. However, Ray claims since the people selling them are clean, they must track down the suppliers. That trail eventually leads them to Booth, and they are able to arrest him after discovering a packet on him, in order to get him to talk. While Booth is watching, Chris and Ray decide to disassemble Booth's customized pickup truck. They are still unable to force Booth to provide the knowledge, but he warns them they will be wounded. Chris offers to give his father a shotgun, to keep him secure at home, but he refuses. Chris hands over the gun, and they each warn each other to be cautious. Back at the station, Chris urges Ray to keep an eye on his house, because he knows Hamilton will not be silent. Denny visits Chris at the station, learning Booth was arrested at night, brings him homemade dinner, and they kiss after Chris learns she quit her job. They rekindle their relationship there and then. They intend to go get some food. When Chris's truck explodes, Booth bursts out laughing, and yells, truck for truck. The ex-sheriff and fire deputies have launched an attack on the police station. They open fire on Chris, not knowing Booth is in one of the cells, which Booth swiftly notices, and begins shouting out to Chris. To assist him in getting out, Chris orders Denny to hide in the building's foundations, and hands her a gun. He approaches Booth, and taking advantage of the circumstance, forces him to divulge details regarding Hamilton's illegal plant. Booth acknowledges they are created at the old timber mill, but he gets shot and dies, before Chris can get him out. Chris is able to return Watkins and his men to his home, with the assistance of Denny. More of Hamilton's thugs arrive to attack Chris's family, but Ray appears on the scene, and with the help of Pete and Michelle, is able to hold the fort. When Chris arrives, his father shoots the previous intruder. Chris drives up to the old mill, assuring everyone that everyone is safe, where he discovers a full illegal lab. He stalks deeper into the factory, where Hamilton awaits him. Chris attempts to capture him, but Hamilton deceives him, activating a trap door, while Chris is hanging. Hamilton slams him, telling him he should have accepted the job offer, instead of attempting to become a hero, because this is his hometown. But Chris manages to yank him away, and the two of them sink further into the facility. 
Hamilton manages to hit Chris, causing him to fall outside, and injure his leg. He flees into the surrounding woodland, pursued by Hamilton with an axe. While hiding, Chris manages to realign his dislocated bone, allowing him to stand up to Hamilton's attack, and engage in a violent fight, that ends with Chris eventually overcoming Hamilton. He adds as he stands over Hamilton that, yeah, this does affect the relationship, because this is now his town and Hamilton is under arrest. Chris and Ray close up the corrupt casino next. Ray sneaks away with some mementos, which Chris humbly berates. They get into the car, joking whether Hamilton has built a casino in prison, and we can see the ancient timber mill has been reopened, providing jobs for the locals. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.